today's topic of discussion is something I'm still kind of working through and I, I'm posting it before I finalised any thoughts or done more research just because I kind of want to get feedback on it um, and so maybe some of you might know a better starting point than the ones that I've already read. But basically what happened is the other day um, Florian Gadsby posted a video on Instagram of him destroying uh, rejected pots because the glaze had crawled and things like that. And people were saying, isn't it bad for the planet? And it got me thinking, um, you know, how bad for the planet is it to destroy a pot? Um, and I started doing a bit of research and found that I, well, there were no immediate answers, but I think I do have a ballpark figure for how much carbon dioxide a producing a mug will put out into the atmosphere. And to save you having to listen to all of the waffle to find out the answer, I think it's somewhere in the region of one to two kilos, which isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. So that's the equivalent of driving around five to 10 miles, depending on your car or um, depending on what you're eating, for example, uh, beef that hasn't been farmed with lowering emissions in mind uh, is something in the region of 20 to 30 kilos of CO2 per kilo of beef. So a steak is responsible for quite a handful of mugs in, in purely that measure. But basically, the way I went about it is I started off by just Googling to try and find anyone who'd worked out. Oh, I didn't do a great job of that. Um, anyone who'd, fa who'd published a paper or written an article trying to, to get at the answer already. And there was a paper that I skimmed through but um, seemed to give a fairly complete picture. So they looked at a tile manufacturer and they followed the process start to finish, how all the materials got their loss at each part of the process and they arrived at the answer of um, 3,730 kilos of carbon dioxide per tonne, so that's a thousand kilos or a million grams of um, tiles. So if you made a ton of tiles, their estimate is that that would have been responsible for 3,730 kilos of CO2, or roughly a kilo of CO2, no sorry, 3.7, so about 4 kilos of CO2 per kilo of finished pots. So that is a, a very rough guide. I mean, obviously this is a tile manufacturer and they're a medium-sized factory, so it's not that comparable to handmade pottery, but in a, it's a starting point at least. So that's covering everything from um, getting the materials through firing, and I believe packing as well, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, so that was the first point of data that I found. Um, and I had, at this point I had no idea if that was anywhere near sensible. Um, someone else put me onto another study. These people were, I believe it, it looked like it was advocating for um, uh, single use paper cups. So their study was how many times would a cafe have to reuse a, um, a single-use ceramic mug before it was better than a single-use paper cup. And they were working on the principle that um, ceramic mugs have a higher, a much higher production cost than paper mugs, and then the washing of a ceramic mug is in their estimate somewhere close to the production cost of a paper one 
So actually, um, almost just on washing alone, they thought ceramic mugs were worse than single-use paper ones. Uh, don't know about any of that. They, they, I think they ended up with something like you'd have to reuse a ceramic mug around 20 to 30 times before it got um, before it's better for the planet than uh, a single-use one. But the point is that in order to get to that calculation, they had to have a starting point for the carbon dioxide production of the ceramic mug. And they put it at a little under a kilo. Well, actually more like, it doesn't say exactly, but I think it's more like 700 grams of carbon dioxide for a mug. So that's broadly speaking in line with what I got from the other one, where a um, mug will be about a kilo, depending on the size of the mug. But realistically, you could get four mugs to a kilo of finished mug. And if it's 3.7 kilos of CO2 per kilo of ceramics, then you can just divide that by four to get a little under a kilo. So those two are broadly speaking in line with each other, different papers, different purposes. So that's kind of a sign that possibly in the ballpark of one kilo is a fairly good place to look. You can do some back of the, the envelope calculations for um, handmade ceramic stuff. So the first one is the firing, which is very easy if you've got a kiln that tells you how many kilowatts a firing used, which my kiln does. Um, and I look at something in the region of 30 kilowatt hours for a firing to cone six that would fire 30 mugs. So you can say one kilowatt hour per mug. Um, and with the UK um, production of energy, because obviously that will vary from country to country depending on how they generate electricity, but in the UK that's equivalent to about 250 grams CO2. So a firing, just the firing alone, the glaze firing, is a quarter of a kilo. So if the rest of it added up to a kilo, you're still in that ballpark for one kilo per mug. Um, the other very rough calculation that I did, and this is in no way representative of reality, but um, does sort of get at the number from a different direction, is looking at the prices of things. Because essentially, every part of the process, you've got mining, processing, shipping to the distributor, who then has to ship it on to you. So at every point, there are gonna be primarily two costs, which is the labor cost, how many man hours get put into something, and then the fuel cost. So to dig something out, you're probably looking at you know, earth, earth earth moving equipment using diesel, say. Um, the processing will probably use electricity. And then the final shipping, kind of the haulage logistics part of it, more diesel or petrol or something in that. Yeah, that's basically what you're looking at is some form of energy consumption at each stage. Um, and all of that has to be factored into the price for it to be worth doing. In other words, the price you pay has to include all of the um, energy costs, which are going to be probably largely fossil fuels burnt in combustion engines. So what I did is I worked out how much of how much clay, how much of each ingredient of a glaze I would put onto a typical mug, um, worked out how much that costs, converted that into straight petrol if you bought it at a fuel pump size. And I haven't accounted at all for the labour, just if they took the money you gave them for buying the materials, if they took that and went straight to a petrol pump and bought it as petrol and then put it in a typical petrol car uh, and drove until they'd used up all the money that you paid for those ingredients, how much CO2 would that produce? 
Now obviously, no part of that is what they did. You know, what their processes are completely different. But it does get at the money you've paid, if it was converted directly into CO2 through a fossil fuel, how much fossil fuel, how much pollution is that money going to produce? And believe it or not, the answer comes to more or less exactly a kilo for the materials that I would use to make a standard mug. So that's three things that get to, and obviously that's the material, so a kilo, and then, as I said, I've made some very unrealistic assumptions about what they're gonna do with the, the money that I give them. So realistically, that's gonna overestimate because they've got to pay labor costs and hopefully they're, not all the equipment will be more efficient than just converting it to petrol, but if they're using um, uh, electrical energy, then it will be more efficient and so on and so forth. So um, the materials get to a kilo and then you know from your firing costs that you're looking at um, possibly another half kilo in firing costs. So three things put you in the ballpark of just under a kilo to nearer two kilos. But there's nothing I've seen so far that suggests that that's wildly unrealistic. So, the point of this video is twofold. One, I thought that was quite interesting, and maybe you will too. And two, I'm sure someone else will have put a bit more thought into this and tried harder to get a realistic number. So, I mean, obviously that's that study for the tile manufacturer, but a medium-sized tile production plant is not the same as a potter anyway, let alone um, a small scale production. So that part of it, I'm not so sure it applies, but equally, um, it's most likely that uh, a lot of their processes are the same as the ones that would be used to prepare the ingredients that we buy. So the main difference would probably be the firing. Um, they probably have a completely different kiln setup to we, what we would, but the rest of it might be comparable. Um, but maybe someone's done a better job of that. So if you know of any resource that's more applicable, please let me know, because I'd be very interested to see it. Um, and yeah, basically I'll do a follow up, I'll do a blog post that kind of puts um, better numbers to all of this. Uh, so it's all written down. But I thought this was interesting. I thought it's still kind of a half formed thought at the moment. But, um, but actually it was interesting enough that I might keep digging and see if I can get somewhere close, somewhere closer to a true answer that we can realistically say is correct. Because actually, a kilo is not that much. As in, each time you reject a pot and smash it and then feel like you're really, you know, you're being terrible for the environment because you put all of that work in. Or, I mean, less so if you've shipped it to someone it's broken because the shipping will be another cost that you have to add on top. But, um, but yeah, actually, when you put it in the context of the amount of beef steak that that could actually be equivalent to. You could be responsible for more CO2 um, just throwing away a few scraps of beef than you would be throwing away a mug, which I thought was quite interesting. Another interesting one is the energy cost, because kilns are actually surprisingly efficient um, because of the excellent insulation. They're basically kind of uh, somewhere between a kettle and kind of going up from there, but not a huge amount of energy goes into them and then the insulation is what gets them that hot. Um, I worked it out, roughly speaking, a medium sized mug. Once you've had 15 cups of coffee, somewhere between 15 and 20, depending on how much water you put in exactly, but 
around 15 to 20 cups of anything, but boil the water for 15 to 20 cups for that mug, you will have put more energy into the water than you did firing it to 1200 degrees C. So, which actually kind of does make sense because, yeah, you're putting a similar weight of water in and you're heating it from 20 to 100 degrees repeatedly rather than going up. So the fact it's efficient, that does actually go to show just how efficient they are because you can kind of just keep adding that energy. Obviously everything has a specific heat capacity that's going to be different, but broadly speaking, that makes sense. But yeah, by the time you've used a mug 20 times, you'll have put more energy into the water than you did into the glaze firing place. So hopefully that was all moderately interesting. As I said, let me know if you know of anything um, that contradicts this or adds to it. I'd be very interested to know.